Alright guys, welcome back to this Minecraft series. This is part 15 of this Minecraft series. Finally, this video is here after two months. I have one announcement to make, uh, which is basically for the next video, part 16. I'm asking you guys to put suggestions for the topic of that video in the comments of this video. For example, if you would like to see trees in the world, or if you would like to see um, the inventory uh, menu, or the hotbar, or something like that. Or even different blocks. So put all your ideas in the comment section. And yeah, without further ado, let's get started programming. So guys, let's start to code, okay? so. The first thing that I want to show you is, um, yeah, so that's where we left off in the last video. Um, we basically added, you know, acceleration, we added a player object, we added, um, what was that? Okay, I see. So, yeah, so we added a player object, and then we added um, deceleration, sorry, not acceleration, deceleration. And then also, uh, I fixed the collision system, so that's much better right now. And we probably did most things. Um, so. In this video, we're gonna be, we're gonna be adding a depth to a world. So right now, if I break a block, below it is just the void. Okay, and also over here, you can see on the mountain sites, um, they're like, you know, it's supposed to be like like that. Okay, so it's supposed to fill these in. There's supposed to be a depth into the world. The reason why you see these holes is because the um, the gradient of the mountain there, the steepness is too high. Okay, it's it's a really steep mountain. So it's supposed to look like that, you know, I just built them in. So, um, yeah, so in this video, we're going to be adding depth into a world. And yeah, let's see how this goes. Okay, so start to code. Let's see. So um, you may have noticed at the start of every video, I've started to do this. I basically keep, like, I have another file where I code before the video to check if everything works. And um, I basically keep track of everything that I've added or changed so I don't miss out anything while I make the video. So, um, and you can also see at the very end, we crossed a thousand lines. So at the end of this video in your program, you should have over a thousand lines. Well, if you did it as inefficiently as me. <laughs> so um, yeah, there are a lot of inefficiency uh, bits of code in this program. So yeah, let's start it. Okay, so uh, this is your program. At the very start, some HTML, like three lines of CSS. And you basically want to go to this part over here, okay? So where you, the first loop, or is this the first loop? Uh, yeah, it is, okay. Yeah, so the first for loop, um, like the part where you generate the first world, okay? So like this is the part where you generate the first world, right? Uh, I basically want to add two variables, okay? Var depth, let's say it's five, and, I'll, and I'm gonna be explaining what these means. Uh, and for min y world, sorry, min world y, okay? And basically this keeps track of um, of the depth of the world. So how many blocks, so in terms of, in terms of blocks, so how many blocks deep is the world? And this keeps track of um, the minimum, the minimum y coordinate of a block. So like up on the screen, you can see in a normal Minecraft world, if you dig all the way down, um, at some point you will see like a flat, a flat base, right, of bedrock. That's basically the minimum uh, block placement of um, of the world, right? Like you can go uh, below it, but you can't place any blocks below it, and no blocks are generated below that. So this min world y is basically um, below this, no blocks will be generated. So the next thing is um, var block box, yeah, okay. So uh, yeah, so the next thing is I wanna change all these instance chunks, okay? So basically now that we added this depth, we have to times this by depth, okay? We have to times it by depth. And we're actually not done because we still have to edit all of the other instance chunks, okay? Like all the other instance meshes functions that we call, okay? So um, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, let's find the next one. So um, if you have a if you have a command F thing in your computer, then you can just, you know, find it using command F. Uh, so here's the next one. And if you see, you will find that instance meshes, every time when we write that in our code, or when I write it and when you write it in your code, 
in the, in the case of the series is every time when we um, you know write this code is basically when we want to generate the world again when we want to refresh the world so you can see I did seen the remove instance chunk and then I want to create a new updated instance chunk okay so yeah let's go ahead and update so um, place blocks yeah so I just want to time this by depth and then go to the next one it's going to be over here times this by depth and there are four more because in the world generation the infinite world generation part uh, which is over here um, in the in the update function uh, there are four sides so there are, you know four we'll see this four times so times depth and then times depth again over here and then and one step times depth. All right, so yeah, we actually covered like half of the things that I've done, okay? I, I actually didn't include one thing, um, updated the update function. <laughs> um, infinite okay, so uh, yeah, so now we have to do this and then that and then we're done, okay? So edited the initial, you know, function, um, sorry, the for loop that creates the initial world, which is over here, okay? So basically right below where we just added these variables. Basically what this does is it creates a plane and it tweaks the Y variables of each block. So it looks like, you know, like a terrain, okay? So um, we basically have to add a Y for loop. So we have X1, we have a Z1, we have to add a Y. So if you just copy this part of the code, so just leave these three lines and just copy this, okay? Just copy that. And then create a for loop with a variable called D, which will be smaller than depth and increase D by one. And then paste in that code that you just copied. So if you're confused, I can just show you what it should look like. Um, so before we had this, now we have that. So everything that I just copied is now inside a for loop, as you can see. So what this does is it basically goes, um, so if I have this block over here, it basically from there, it puts that, okay, it puts that block. And then it also goes down five times and puts new blocks, okay? If, if the depth is 10, it will go down uh, nine more times, but in total 10 times. So uh yeah so chunk dot push new block and we have to update these y positions so it's not v but it's the v minus d times five because we have to do v the the current the like the generated um Perlin noise y position minus um d times one d times two d times three and so on sorry five times d okay so each time um yeah hopefully you understand that it's pretty simple and then also over here Instead of just writing V, we have to do V minus D times Y. And then we're still not done. The last thing at the top of this for loop, um, to work with this min world Y, you, you have to say that if the blocks Y position is below the minimum possible or like the minimum allowed Y position, then don't put that block. Okay. Just skip it. So we have to say if the Y position, which is V minus D times five, is smaller than the min world y. <laughs> it's like I'm saying the min world wide web, you know, but whatever. Uh, min world y is, uh, yeah, then continue. Okay, so you want to, um, like continue in JavaScript, it basically uh, refers to this loop, the external loop, and it basically says if this condition is true, or like if something happens, then um, continue, and continue basically just skips everything after the loop and goes to the next iteration. So that was that, this stuff. Now let's take a look at updated the update function. Okay. So let me just go there and notice how this is in the, you know, like my program that I edited for this that I wrote. Okay. So um, let's see, where are we? Yep. Okay. Over here. So let's see what the difference is. So this is what we have right now over here yeah so yeah you can see it's a bit longer okay slightly longer 
and this in the first uh, if statement of the in, of the infinite term generation part. Okay. So what we have to do, we have to add that loop. So we have to add the the oh I put an e over here for some reason, but yeah, I guess we can also put an e. It doesn't really matter. Um, and yeah, actually I'll just copy this. Okay, I'll copy and paste it, and then and then I'll explain what it means. So let me just copy this from here down to. Okay, so I'll copy this for each world generation. So the four like sides. So there's like a there's one side there, one side there, one side there, and one side there. So like front, back, left, right. So there are four you know if statements. Remember when we wrote that? So yeah, and then I'm going to paste it four times in the same places. Okay, sorry, I'm going to paste it three more times. Okay, so um, so far I've done that four times, which is good. So now let me just explain what this does. So, uh, yeah, this is the first if statement, infinite ter terrain generation part. So, this is what I just pasted over here. Okay, what does this mean? So, um, yeah, you can see it's like exactly the same. Did I change anything here? No, I don't think so. But, um, so x off. Is uh yeah so that's what we had last time right we had this part and we also had a bunch of code in here I basically added a for loop that um that says that if the yeah just like just like what we just did if the if the y position of the block that you're about to put is small smaller than the min world y then continue then skip everything below and go to the next iteration then uh just like what we did, uh, like we've done this code before, okay? So I don't really have to explain that. Uh, yeah, just over here with all the with all the y's, make sure you put v minus e times five, okay? Because that's a new y value. It's not just v; it's v minus e times five. That's why we have this for loop. And then outside of the for loop, um, I basically put this guy, okay? And we had this last time also. It's just this time I put. Um, I actually don't know if I changed anything, but just look at that uh, and see if I have changed anything. I don't know. I actually don't remember. Uh, and notice how this is outside of this for loop. Okay. So the depth for loop, the E one over here, it's separate to this for loop. So they're not nested. Okay. So um, yeah, I'm basically going through all the place blocks. Like like I did write this code before in the previous videos and I showed you, but um, I don't know if I changed a few things. So let me just go over this. So I basically, you know, going through all the place blocks, checking if the place blocks is Y and Z positions are um, equal to the Z and X positions. Sorry, if the X and Z positions are equal to the X and Z positions of um, our current iteration. And if it is, then add the place block to the chunk. OK, so, yeah. So if we have like a stacked place block like that, it will go through each of them because each of them are in the same XZ position. That's a quick way to do it. And then basically from this X off down, go down until this, the end of this loop. Make sure you also copy that bracket. Just copy that and paste it each time. So like from this X off, like I've already done it, but you can see there's no change. I, I just did it. So yeah. So you have to paste it four times or like three times um, in the other three infinite term generation statements, if statements. And yeah, with that said, we're actually done with this. So let's go ahead and see if this works. So, and it is more laggy now because um, they're like more blocks. They're five times more blocks. Um, or like there should be five times. Um, yeah, so let's see if this works. Uh, so like for example, right now, if I dig into this, you can see they're like, you know, blocks filled up, but you can see, yeah, not anymore because the depth is only five, okay? So the depth is five. Uh, you have to make the depth like a hundred or something if you want uh, to see if you want to go all the way down to the min worldwide. So like for example, yeah, right now you can see I can dig down. Okay, if I do, uh, let me just do player dot y. So I'm just gonna see at what point should the blocks uh, stop generating. So, so like where is the min worldwide? So yeah, so right about there. So right when I type that into the console, that's how deep the, the block should go. 
But if I do that on my computer, it will probably lag a lot uh, because my computer is not the best. <laughs> um, yeah, right now it's on like 84 degrees. So um, yeah, if you have a better computer, this will uh, you can increase this uh, depth of variable, which is over here, the one that we added. You can increase that to like 100 or something, um, and yeah, and that should work. So. Uh, that was actually not the end of this video because now we also have to make it so um, the the user can't place blocks if the block is lower than the the min worldwide. Okay, so uh, let's go to the block the placing block part, which is in the document added from listener key down place, and if e dot key is controlled options dot place block, go all the way down where we do um, yeah. So we just calculated the wide variable. Okay. And I basically have to do copy everything below this white thing, copy everything below it, okay? Tab it, because now we're gonna add an if statement that basically says if the if y is smaller than the min world y, then um, yeah, so basically do this if y is bigger, okay? So not smaller, if y is bigger. So if y is bigger than the min worldwide, then you can do all this. But if it's smaller, it won't do any, it won't do anything, okay? So yeah, uh, that was that. That was the end of this video, actually. Quick one, how long? Like 16 minutes so far or something. Um, and yeah, the next video, like I said, you guys decide what you want to see. And um, yeah, I guess that's the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching and uh, thank you for holding your patience for like two months. So uh, yeah, thank you. See you guys in the next video.